we need to make sure that uh, our intro video is down. Yeah, okay, we got the music down a little bit. That's good. Uh, What's up, y'all? How we doing, man? What's up, chat? Appreciate what? y'all being here. Welcome, fans. Welcome, friends. Welcome, YouTube, to episode... Episode... Two. Hashtag number two, bro. That I told y'all la- right. I told y'all last week, and I told you, Nick, and you knew about this. What's that, sir? But uh, oh. we, we are two yeah. episodes away from beating 95% of the people that try to do launch podcasts. That's exciting. Yeah, you know, that's a statistic that I'd like to, uh, I'd like to surpass so we can do that. <laughs> And uh, just keep crushing. That'd be super dope yeah. if we could, you know, surpass that four episode mark. That'd be nice, That's dude. It. How's everybody feeling? We feeling good? Scroll down there and yep. look right at the chat there. Oh, dude, that's beautiful. Oh, right boom! There. Look at that. Look at that. We, we got, got power stroke. B, Laura, let's go. Morgan, Nina, Carla, Martin, power stroker. Oh, what's up, guys? A lot of mixture between Twitch people, Nick's people, and my music people. I like Absolutely. it, y'all. Hey, y'all, don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Hello, guys. Thanks. What's up? <laughs> Big Paul, what's happening, brother? <laughs> Amanda, how are you? Good to see you. How are you guys, man? Good hey, stuff. Do us, do us a favor, man. This is something I do in my Twitch chat quite a bit, bro. I like to say one through five. One being you're terrible, five being you're great. And I like to make sure that everybody knows that they need to be honest. Sure. Everybody type one, two, the number one, two, three, or four, or five, depending on how you're feeling right now. What would you say your feeling is? Your your number of feeling right now is, bro. I would normally be a five. Yeah. But I think I'm a six. A six, bro. Can you tell them why you're a six? I'm a six because, um, you know, tired, no. not feeling. What's up, dude? No, no. I'm just happy to be. I'm happy to be here chilling. Uh, Therapy. I session? actually, I actually probably am a little bit of a four, just because. Yeah, fatigue. I mean, look, as as we explained kind of last week, we got a lot going on. We got music. We got business. We got uh, families. We got all kinds of good stuff. So sometimes it catches up to you. So I'm happy to be here, though. I'm full of full of full of piss and vinegar for you guys. That's for sure. Hell yeah! Can we get a hell yeah in the chat? Can I get a hell yeah? Um. How was your week, bro? Since the last time we uh, <laughs> did our first episode, let's go. This week, uh, this week was great. Yeah. Uh, Nick and Nick's roofing uh, had a very good week this week. We expanded uh, our territories down to Lewisburg, and uh, yeah, a lot of roofing, a lot of picking up some slack. Had a great right last night. Um, How late did that right go? That that right went to about four a.m. So, also maybe Welcome contributed to, to my entire midnight tired. Nashville rights, baby. I like it. 4 a.m. Uh, and then I had to be up at seven to uh, get to work. So running on empty, just like Jan- uh, Jackson Brown says, you know. Heck yes. I and like then it. Uh, yeah, gig tomorrow night, nine o'clock. That's an hour of originals at the Vinyl Lounge. Anybody local, come on by and check it out and come see us. Someone in this chat's got to be close to, to to Nashville. Has oh. to be. You should definitely go see this guy. I tell you what, if you're if you go see this guy, I'll try and go see this guy, even though I have two little kids. Bring the is this a kid friendly place? What time is the play? Nine o'clock. Yeah, they're in bed. Perfect. Bring them sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be snoozing and just that's all right. the drums will be just going crazy. How about you? How was your how was your week? Dude, my week was uh good, man. Um, you know, still getting used to uh the household without the old mags. But mm-hmm. uh yeah. you know, uh we're uh we're doing. Uh had a bunch of streams on Twitch which were uh Crazy man, I tell you what, uh, yeah, I've you been. You said you've been getting back on the Twitch is pretty good. Uh, nighttime. Nighttime, yeah, yeah. I you when I started streaming live on Twitch, I was doing strictly night times all the time, and then I went to daytime, and now I've just kind of gotten bored of daytimes a little bit. I don't know if sure. it's like I'm not good at like routines for a long time, but I've just been having fun at night with the people that are in my Twitch stream. So it's been lit. Nighttime is kind of like OG gamer time though. It really is. But this, but at the same time, a lot of people stream at the same time at nighttime too. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, sure. So, but lost um, in the crowd a little bit more. But it's been it's it's been lit. Like my Twitch community has been freaking showing up and showing out, and I appreciate that so much because Twitch has literally changed my life. It has, <laughs> and uh, that's because of the people that support me on there. So, uh, did that. Um, you know, did the dad thing, got two little girls, and... Um, you guys should have seen him. I just watched him put his put his little girl to bed. It was uh, it was nothing short of adorable. <laughs> what a guy. I tell you what, what a guy. Man, I tell you what, 
you know, like I said last week, I'm always going to keep it real. Uh, growing up, I never wanted kids. We had kids. But whenever we found out that we were going to have a kid, I was like, I, want, I, I, like, I need a girl. Yeah. I you did. You, you you said that from day one. I, I was like, I what do you want, boys? Because yeah. a lot of dudes' reaction is like, yeah, boy, want, boy, want boy, 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 boy. And boy. you were like, I want girls. And you, I don't know if you spoke that into existence, but girls it is. You want to know something crazy is whenever I found out, <laughs> first of all, I don't know if you guys, you probably know, but your boy was freaking out. Yeah, freak, like, freaking out. Like, it was, whenever, so Joel is going to turn two uh, in May. And whenever she, uh, whenever we found out uh, that we were going to have her, um, it took me about like a good old two months to recover. <laughs> I was scared to death. I was like, I am not ready for this, bro. I'm an artist. I'm broke as, you know what? I mean, yeah, good catch. <laughs> broke as a shlava ding dong. Uh, you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, w- I, w- I went to, I remember going to church. Uh, literally the next morning, and a good fr- and a good friend of mine from church was I. I told them I was like, man, like I'm not, I am not ready for this. I didn't want a kid right now, to be honest. Like to be completely real, this was the day after I found out. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know what? I pray a girl for you. And I didn't know why he said that. And he was like, because girls just do something to the dad's heart. And I was like, all right, bet. So I said, I I already wanted girls, but the fact that he said that, I was like, all right, it's it's happening. Girls are happening, and so yeah. we have two of them. So it's good, man. So that and they're was, and they're, and was, they're adorable. Yeah, my week was streaming and uh, playing music and uh, doing that. So yeah, sounds like a hell of a week. Let's take a look at this uh, chat here. Yeah, what's up, y'all? Appreciate y'all being here, man. Thank you, Terry. What a good daddy. Couldn't agree more. Hey, huge shout out to we got twenty eight people in here, man. That's Holler. that's amazing. That's great. Uh, we peaked at I think thirty four last week. I mean, man, if we could get if we could get 40. 40 in here, that would be dope, man. Just so keep if y'all growing. if y'all know somebody that's not in here yet, man, get them in here. I would appreciate it. It'd be cool to it'd be cool to beat that. So hey, Jessica Eldred Elledge, Elledge, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Good to see you guys. Keep reaching out. Thanks for uh, thanks for hollering at us, not just logging on, but hollering at us and participating in what we got going on. We love that. That helps the show keep flowing. And uh, and yeah, one hundred percent, man. Love that. Love that. Uh, so I had a question shot at for, me for me. Oh, for question. both of us. Word. Okay. I had a question shot but, at us for both of us. By who? Uh, to be honest, I can't remember. I don't remember who shot it, but I do remember that it was a question from someone that was in the chat last week. Word. Um, and they were like, all right, I want you guys to tell a funny story that you, that a funny or, <laughs> or just a, some kind of good story that you've had while traveling um, on the road for music. Okay. And, um, you know, we obviously oh my gosh. had shows together as well, but yeah. I figured we could do one individually, you as an artist, and then... Uh, one for me as well. So, just to give them, give give these amazing people a little, a little brief insight of road life. Whenever, yeah. especially when you're not Jason Aldean on a four story bus. Yeah, it's not like that at all. <laughs> it's usually like four or five sweaty dudes that are just crammed up and traveling. True story. Uh, picking up food on the road, like fast food or something like that. Um, oh my the, gosh. the road life has actually changed quite a bit for me. And the guys that I travel with, the guys and the girls that I travel with, actually health and like staying healthy and feeling good is like a priority right so like like hitting the planet fitness and taking showers if you need to not just eating fast food mcdonald's like going for salads because like not just stopping at every gas station getting candy like literally all the things that just make you feel like literal crap when you're on the road yeah which has been great it's it's a great evolution of road life right yeah like imagine like y'all imagine right like you're in a van with a bunch of other guys or gals and uh, you're, uh, say, two weeks, right? It's, oh, yeah. It, and you're always on the road. Or you're, you're always on the run. You're always trying to get to the next place. Yep. Um, it's like a hurry up and wait kind of thing, right? Sure. You hurry, 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 and then you, you gotta get check to in. Place you got to check in. Yeah, and you get in for your sound check. you gotta, you got to bring your van in. That, it, literally, Kayla was like the best thing that could have happened for right. all that stuff. She made it easy. I watched how you guys did it, and I was like, I got to get mine that way, too. Yeah. It was like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. But like whenever you're on the road <laughs> traveling, I mean you're you're trying to get to the destination. So what yeah. do you do? You freaking go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger. It's it's hard to stay healthy. But you're right. Nowadays nowadays it's easier. 
uh, because you got places like Chopped yeah. and, uh, you know, fat, like healthy fast food places that are out there now. For sure. And every every place like a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A or a Panera, you can get a salad or something like that. Yeah, right. And it sounds, it sounds dumb, but, like, that makes a hell of a difference. So. It really does, man, because... <clears throat> You get absolutely tired yeah. of eating freaking damn Mc, like, like just nuggets. Just feeling like bloated. Dude, like, oh, especially the older you get too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean. I used to be able to have like four McDoubles and just like and then go for a jog. Now I eat like a, a McDouble and a half and I'm like, I feel like I just got shot in the ass with a tranquilizer <laughs> dart. It's like it is bad. So. You, you tell your guys, excuse me guys, I'm going to go ahead and nap in the back seat yeah, for a good four hours. To ride, right? Yeah. So, but a funny story. Yeah, shoot us. So, shoot us um, a story. It could be a little on the um, yep. inappropriate side, but we should be That's just fine. fine. So uh, we had a gig at this place, uh, me and a couple guys, and uh, we had done like three or four gigs in a row. <laughs> so we were like, "Oh, we got the set list down. Like, we got we got everything. Uh, we're ready to go. Like, this is this is pretty much like automatic." Yeah. So we get up, we get ready for the gig, and uh, and one of the guys is like, "Hey." I'm going to take a couple shrooms. Like, do you guys, anybody else want to take some shrooms? Oh, gosh. And I've never taken them before. But I heard that it was fun as long as you do it in the right doses and you're around people that you trust, which I was. And so, sure. and so I was like, yeah, hell, give me a couple. A couple calves, a couple stems, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's going to taste bad. Pop and like, yeah, it's not too bad. Anyway, long story short, I'm walking on stage and all of a sudden I, it kicks in. Like, we took it probably like an hour, hour and a half beforehand, and I'm walking on stage, like they say, and Nick DeLeo, and we're walking on stage, and all of a sudden, it kind of just hits me. Oh. I'm, I'm feeling a little... While you're on stage? As I'm walking on stage, like before the first song. So I'm just like, yeah. What, bro? So I, so I all of a what sudden... What are we doing? I know. I so it was I, after, bro. But it was a cool... Like, I wasn't nervous. I was <sighs> like, I'm with my boys. Like, we're going to be just fine. And then all of a sudden... Uh, it's my turn to play and I feel like this energy and I'm just like singing and I'm feeling it and I'm like I'm embodying I'm remembering the day that I wrote the song the inspiration and I'm just like I'm feeling this song so good right yeah and I was like oh these are the best like I need to do this before every show and I <laughs> so an hour and a half goes by the whole gig goes by and I and I'm like and I like walk off stage and I look at the other guy and we get a big clap and all that and I walk off stage and I get back to the green room and I look at the guys. I was like, hell yeah, boys. I was like, that was the best show that we've ever played. And I like walk into the bathroom and like just like throw some water in my face. And I walk out and they're all looking at me like, dude, are you serious? And I was like, what are you talking about? And they were like, you were literally flat the entire time were you singing or were you playing guitar no i was singing it was a it was an actual songwriter gig they're like that was the worst they're like i love you and i'm gonna tell you honestly but that was the worst you've ever sounded they were like at one point in the middle of a solo you just yelled like hell yeah into the microphone and i was just while you were in like singing lyrics i'm just like so on saturday night hell, hell yeah, yeah brother <laughs> And uh, and then we came back the next night, and the sound guy's like, "You guys did fine. You guys did fine." But you know, lesson learned. Uh, now we're, we're we're on par when we get ready for a gig. But that was one of the funnier ones. I thought I slayed this. I thought I slayed this gig. And then my buddy's like, "That was the worst. That was the worst you've ever sounded." That was the worst thing. That's the worst. I was it was like that Family Guy episode where like uh, they smoke weed before they get up and start singing. And oh then, yeah. And then there's like reality versus. Yeah. Expectations versus reality. Right, right, right. Yeah. It was pretty funny, but uh, yeah, so I don't do shrooms before gigs. That's probably go. a good thing, man. You yeah. know what I mean? It's probably a good decision. Wise business. Oh, yeah. You know, business, <laughs> wise business decision. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, man, uh, I have a bunch of them, and I, don't, I really don't know which one to share, to be honest. Um, trying to think. All right. I know which one to share. This is a true story, and this is absolutely going to blow y'all's mind. Okay, so when I was I was still living in Florida at the time, and we were traveling from Florida uh, to Nashville, okay. back and forth over uh, every now and then. And so uh, we're going to Nashville to record my very first album ever. Some of y'all yeah, yeah. might know it's not even on the internet anymore. It's called All Fired Up. All fired up. I, I used to love that album. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't. You cannot find that album. Hear anymore. the music bumping. But anyway, um, 
So we're in Nashville and we get done with the first recording session of the day. It's a long recording session. And I think I've heard this. We get super hungry. We're starving. And our hotel is right near Broadway. And so we're like, all right, let's just go downtown, you know, watch some music and um, get something to eat. And I can't remember for the life of me what bar it was. I think they changed names, to be honest, which is an everyday thing in Nashville. Yeah, notice. literally. Uh, but we, we go to this sports bar, okay? And uh, it's pretty much completely empty. Um, myself, my old my old bass player, his uh, work manager, and our guitarist, um, we all go to this place to eat. And it's a sports bar. Uh, it's the, it's January, so you know how downtown Nashville is in January. It's not that busy. Yeah. And so uh, we sit down to eat, and this waitress comes over, and uh, she's like, "Hey, she seems she seems fine, right?" She she's like, "Hey, how's it going?" We're like, "Hey, good. How's it going?" And she starts handing the menus or whatever, and um, she's like, "Okay, what can I get you to drink?" And we just all start with waters, and she's like, "Yeah, all right, I'll be right back." And so um, she brings the waters around, and then she brings menus, and. Uh, she, she gives us about, I don't know, about two minutes to look over for appetizers. And so she comes back and we decided we want buffalo chicken tenders. Sounds like a pretty reasonable ask. Yeah. And case they had this quesadilla app or this quesadilla appetizer as well. Sounds delicious. So we're like, let's do these. And then some bread, you know, occasionally, you know, bread, butter, whatever. And, uh, so my old bass player's manager goes, yeah, we'd like, uh, we like the quesadilla, the bread, and the buffalo chicken tenders. And she was like, oh, you don't want the chicken. Just like that. She's like, you don't want the chicken. We are like, oh, the why? Chicken? She was like, I promise you don't want the chicken. And we're like, okay. And so we're like, well, we'll take the egg rolls. And she's like, oh, actually, you don't want those either. <laughs> and we're like, why? What do I want? Lady? She's not giving us a reason why we don't want these. Which apparently, we just don't want them. <laughs> and so we're like... Okay, uh, what do you recommend? And she was like, um, well, we had the quesadilla, the bread, and she was like, uh, I recommend the egg rolls. And we're like, all right, we'll take the egg rolls, I guess. You did just say about the egg rolls, right? And Correct. she said, okay, I just want to make sure that I wasn't losing my mind. Correct. No, you're not losing your mind. Okay, I got it. She goes back. Yeah, you heard that right. You heard that right. She said no to the egg rolls, and then she recommended the egg rolls. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chicks off her rocker. Oh, wait. It gets better, bro. So she goes. She's gone for a little while. Uh, she's probably gone for like 15 minutes. I kid you not. And uh, finally comes back, and uh, she brings the appetizers and uh, hands the appetizers. And the egg rolls come uh, about five minutes after the bread and the uh, quesadilla. Okay. Brings it over. Throws the tray of egg rolls across the table. Like this or like so, slide? So you... You, your side is where she is. My side is where all of us are. She goes, here you go, and tosses the egg roll tray, and it goes sliding off of the table. And she goes, oh, sorry. Walks away. I hand on the Bible. I kid you not. I, I swear to goodness. And so we're just like, at this point, we're like, <laughs> what's... What is happening? I guess like, that's why they call it fast food. Is this real? Like, and, it, I, and if you guys have ever heard the restaurant uh, Dicks, it's it wasn't it wasn't that. You know what Dicks is, right? It's, yeah, well, they're not. Dicks they're Resort. Too. Is it yeah. last? Yeah, it wasn't Dicks, that. Dicks Last Resort. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> we're like, okay, that was weird. And so um, <laughs> she bring she she asks us for our drink order, um, which is obviously backwards. Um, we get our uh, alcohol drinks. And so uh, I forget what all of us ordered, but our guitar player wanted a f like some kind of like fruity martini thing. Okay. And once again, she said, oh, you don't want that. Dude, what is this chick doing? She's like, yeah, actually, you don't, you don't want that either. <laughs> He's like, well, what do I want? And she's like, I'll fix you something. And she walks away. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and that's, she that's... brings us, uh, us three our drinks, right? Oh she brings gosh. us three our drinks. And then like two minutes later, she brings him his drink. 
And it, we have no idea what it is. I don't think she knows what's in it. And she just tells him that it's one of her favorite concoctions or whatever. For all we know, she's trying to roofie this guy. Like, like for real. Like, at this point, we're like, okay, this chick is telling us we don't, we're not allowed to order things off the menu. She's throwing trays everywhere. Food's flying everywhere. <laughs> And so now she's bringing our guitar player some random drink that we have no idea what it is or what's in it. Right. And so we takes, he takes the drink, and he, he actually likes it. I don't know. I still don't know to this, to this day what it is, what it was. And we, uh, we then uh, order our food, our actual entrees. And this time she actually didn't say that we didn't want anything. She took the order. Okay. And so, uh, real quick, I, real quick, chat on a scale of one to five. How nuts is this chick? Throw it in the chat. Go ahead, keep going. How crazy is this? Five chick? being <laughs> scale from one to five. Okay. Five being certifiable. And so we get our orders in, and we're like, "Oh wow, she actually let us order what we wanted." Sick. And so, <laughs> and so we wait about you know a good 10, 15 minutes. She brings in uh, the food, <clears throat> hands me my food. Hands a guitar player who she made some random drink for his food. <laughs> Hands my bass player's boss his food. Guess what happens? Dude, I have no idea. She takes a seat next to my bass player. Oh. Puts his food down. Oh. And begins to eat it. Oh, wow. Right in front, dude. What? Is, where are you? You're in Nashville. I'm in Nashville, downtown. This chick has to be just riddled with drugs, <laughs> right? She was eating his food. Oh my gosh! So what was in the drink? Did and we ever like, find out? Like, was like, it good? Like to be honest, at this point, we don't even know what to say because we're just so mind blown. Yeah, we're just so mind blown. We're like. <clears throat> This is like something out of a movie. This is something out of like a TikTok. TikTok wasn't around back then because it was like 2016 or something like that. Vine. This could have been Vine worthy. We're so confused. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say other than, uh, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm hungry. I kid you not. Yeah, we know. I kid you not. She said, oh, I'm hungry. (laughs) Clearly. You're eating your customer's food. What an animal. (laughs) <laughs> that's a 10 yeah that's a 10 was she, she hot word that's a she, that's a valid question and she she <laughs> i don't even remember to be honest yeah good answer and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh <laughs> and she doesn't even finish it she like eats like three chicken tenders and leaves like two for him of course yeah probably licking her fingers the whole time yeah and uh so she leaves and then she brings the check and she uh literally i kid you not either she brings the check and says, quote unquote, I expect a good tip. Hmm. Seems about right. She was ahead of her time because that sounds like customer service in 2020. I don't know since. if she was wasted, if she was on drugs, oh, dude, she was, if she was, maybe she was just trying to get fired. I have no idea, but it was the, it was the wildest thing. You should have Venmoed her for like a portion of the mail. It was the wildest thing I have ever seen in my life. That's hilarious. Um, so did we, we ever find out what was in the drink, though? Uh, well, so our guitar player ended up disappearing later that night. And so was Rufy's. And, and I'm not kidding you. We got to the hotel. She just put ecstasy we in, his, got to the in his Shirley Temple. We got to the hotel, all, of, all <laughs> four of us. Okay? We get in the hotel, and our guitar player's like, I, I, I got to go. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I got to go. I was like, I don't know what you mean. And he just took off on foot. Hey. And he was gone for like eight hours. And we were like genuinely concerned. We were like, where did he go? It's like 12 a.m. in the freaking at the night. And now you're just, you're just gone. So I don't know what happened, bro. It was, it was wild. But that was uh, that was one of my craziest road stories ever. That's funny. I had another one where we uh, we broke down in the middle of Cookville, Tennessee. Oh yeah, on a side road. Hell yeah, Cookville. And uh, we broke down on this like dr- old gravel driveway, 
and uh, we walked up to it, and there was like this ninety-year-old lady just sitting at like a freaking wooden table under a shed, like making applesauce, bro. That sounds like the most country thing I've ever heard. And we were like, "She was we, sitting we were there." Like, we were like, "Excuse me." Uh, our van broke down. Is there a way you could call a tow truck for us? Oh, okay. And uh, I kid you not, bro. We're waiting for her to bring out her 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 phone. I don't even a landline, I guess. And she has a little pet pig. Oh, a pet. <laughs> a pet pig, right? Oh. She has a pet pig, and we're like, "Oh, is that your pet pig?" She's like, this she is was like, Oikers. She was like. No, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we all look at each other. No. We're like, Let's get out of here. No. no. Bro. Oh, man. Bro, it was crazy. I felt like we were in like the freaking, I don't know. Miss con- Betty, haven't con- you noticed that it's not playing fetch? <laughs> so we were in the conjuring or something, dude, with the old lady just about to slit all her throats. So I was like, oh, my Lord of mercy, bro. So, I have plenty more, but there's two crazy ones for oh you right gosh, there. Dude, that's funny. Remember the time that we were driving and we, uh, I forget where we were. I think we were like at your old place, down 24. <coughs> and uh, we saw that we were like getting some fast food. I, we stopped at like some, some, like some barbecue place and we stopped to get fast food. And there was like a homeless guy outside of the fast food restaurant. We were like, ah, poor guy. Like, we'll get him a little something. I think I do remember that. Like, we'll get him a little something, not a. You know, we got a, we got a couple extra bucks. We'll get him like a little sandwich or something like that. Just trying to help out. So we like go ahead and, and get him a sandwich, like a little thing of fries and exit the line, head over to this guy, <laughs> hand him his food. I remember. He, and I'm just expecting like a thank you very much. Oh very gosh, kind of thank you. you like, so freaking yeah, much. Yeah, God is good. Something like that. And, uh. And he opens the chicken sandwich and says, no ketchup. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, Lord, bro. I was, I was beside myself. This close to saying, give me that back. You have lost your chicken sandwich, sir. I was bes- no ketchup. I was beside myself, bro. No ketchup, happened. dude. I felt so bad too, man. Like, also, don't put ketchup like, on a chicken sandwich. That's like weird. you were in the passenger seat, I was driving. I was like, let's let's pull over. Let's 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 give this dude the sandwich because it's an extra sandwich, like you said. I'm like thinking, like everybody needs help. Yeah, for sure. You need water. Yeah, please. And you give him the sandwich, and he's like, no sauce. No ketchup. I'm sorry, man, but like when you say like when that happens, bro. Like with like obviously people. So there's people that have. That are homeless, that have been homeless, truly, right? Truly. But yeah. when that happens, dude, are that like it, it has to cross your mind that like this guy, this guy, is pulling one on us, bro. He's pulling, he's he's pulling one over on yeah. us, bro. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, you know what? If that's his stick, though, the majority, you know what I mean? I feel like the majority of people be like, "Oh man, thank you so much." Like, if you're truly like starving, dude. I, I like, don't know. That's just me. I'm just putting God, my that, opinion. That out was there, too funny. It's just I don't know. That's crazy, bro. Anyway, that was a good one, guys. What do you think? Tell us. Let us know some of your crazy stories because I'm sure there's a lot more people like you out there that have some psycho stories out there with people. Psycho so. freaking stories, yeah, for real. Uh, chat was up to about 36, 37 a second ago. I want to say well, thank let's you. Let's go. Thank you. That's if you're right. just listening, don't forget you could always refresh your view so your view still counts. That's right. We want you guys to count. You guys matter to us All and to yourselves. All matters. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so what else? Yeah, dude. So, um, also, I was thinking about um, earlier, and before we launched this podcast, I was thinking of, like, things we could talk about and stuff like that, and this is something we could always talk about, like, just a bunch of different things, but, you know, so many people, um, and I'm sure a lot of people in the chat right now are, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, music consumers. I would I would sure. gather that most of, most of these awesome people are not in the music industry, or well, there might be a few. Yep. Um, but I was thinking you and I could share one thing that we think that people don't know about the music industry that would blow their mind. 
Okay. Um, you know, just something that like, you know, the 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 consumer probably wouldn't know about the music industry. You know, whether it be a, a politics thing or sure uh, how hard the grind really is or you know mental health type stuff what artists go through or what it's like yeah. in oh my gosh there's nashville and so, la and new york those kind of cities you there's know there's so I mean? much there's so many things that are behind the scenes that you have no idea until you are in the industry and you talk to people and you hear some stories and you're just like wow like uh, everything that I thought that I knew about it. And it doesn't make you shy away. If anything, it makes you just like need to get more uh, informed and know what you're doing and and just not step on the on the landmines as you're trying to navigate your way to your goal, which is to be like a self-sufficient musician, whether that's, you know, a publishing deal or a record deal. I would say the one thing that nobody knows or people probably know but they don't realize is that a lot of your favorite artists don't write their own songs yeah that's something that i was blown away by and <clears throat> probably did help shape kind of what i want to do as an artist um and no no hate or anything like that if you don't write your songs like it takes all different parts of the industry like you have to have writers that write for artists and you know the way that the machine works is the writer's right and the artist's cut. Like, this is how it goes. 100%. Uh, but I remember, like, I remember just assuming that Garth Brooks was, like, this rodeo guy and, like, all this stuff. And it was, like, so, um, so shocking when yeah. I realized that he, you know, I'm sh he wrote a, a few of his songs, but, like, his writers uh, were different people. That was that was a very interesting thing for me. Yeah. And, uh, and again, like I said, no, no no hate at all but mm -hmm. i started realizing that i was liking and loving the artists more that wrote their own songs that weren't going for like the radio the super super famous but were more of like a slow burn like the james taylors like the jim croce's the bob seegers like those people that <clears throat> that really wrote their own stuff yeah. was uh i really started gravitating towards that because it was kind of uh it was just it was my blowing. that was one that's one thing i I'm, i bet a lot of people don't realize about uh, the industry i love that sorry yeah. i'm not texting i'm actually promoting us while my man nick here's talking one thing that i would say <coughs> uh in me hans in my hands in my hands wow sorry about that oh, i good. agree it is way more personal the energy is real like literally it's tangible you can tell one thing that I would say that I feel like not a lot of people know about the music industry is how many close calls there are. Um, yeah. And what I mean by that is, um, me personally, I've had quite a few almosts to where my career really started to gain like some serious traction. You know, sure. for instance, yep. what do I mean by close call? So I had a, uh, I started to develop a really good relationship with a. Um, guy and i'm still friends with him to this day with a guy from uh, broken bow records at the time oh yeah that's right um yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's no longer broken bow records i can't remember someone bought them out i can't remember who they brought bought them out but that uh, in case y'all don't know that's jason aldean's record dustin lynch's record and all that i uh, started to develop a really good relationship with uh him and um music industry and the entertainment industry as a whole is all based on relationships and connections yeah that's period um and as a matter of fact the whole entertainment entertainment industry. You're talking film, streaming, whatever. It's yeah. all about the people you know. But anyway. Yeah, networking, yeah. Um, we really were growing a relationship, man. Becoming friends, going out to eat, going to venues and hanging out and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he actually was tr looking to get me to start writing with one of his writers. Or, or excuse me, some of his writers from the, from the label. Sure. And uh, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. When, when you know, an a on r rep... Uh, you know, likes you that much and as a person, as an artist. And, uh, you know, I was excited, man. I was super excited. And, um, you know, things like that can take a while to get line up. Absolutely. <clears throat> and so, you know, he was working on it. He was working on it. He was working on it. And um, I just remember uh, one day getting a text from him saying that he, uh, his family was moving to Arizona and he was going to be <coughs> traveling back and forth. And I was like, all right, well, that's cool. You know, we'll still, you know, see each other or whatever. And, um, sure. you know, about a month or two later, he decided that he wasn't going to be um, with that label anymore and he was going to move full time to Arizona. And if you guys don't know, if you have somebody as a champion, 
within a label or wherever and you lose and that person leaves or whatever, it's not like their friend of theirs across the hallway is going to now champion you. Yeah. Because you build a relationship with this person, not that yep. person. And uh, especially if you that was one close call that I had to where I was like, I, I remember thinking like, oh, man, like this could this could really open some serious doors. And uh, he uh, he had to leave. He had to leave. Yep. And to the close call thing, it's like there are so many situations where uh, we both know people that have had. Uh, oh, this song is on hold. This song I got to hold or this song is getting cut and they've cut it and they're trying to decide for the album. You know, who is, uh, if, if they're going to pick this one, they've cut X amount of songs and the record only has this many. And that cut equals a real life changing uh, moment. And it just, it doesn't work. And there's so many opportunities where like, we, we've been, we've been saying this since literally we started, you know, hanging and, and writing and stuff. Is that like, you literally just have to keep an even keel the whole time about all this stuff. Like if you, if you get excited about the highs and you get super, super depressed about the lows, like you just you just can't you can't handle that. Like there's so many awesome highs. Like when you're on stage or you're meeting people and you're so jacked up, you finally get a right with somebody that you're trying to, or you get a venue you've been wanting to get, and then like something falls through and it just crushes you. You really just have to like even out, keep an even keel, and and not get too excited or too too you know bent out of shape about this ad. Yeah, 100. percent And I've had other close calls too. Yeah. Um. Uh, I can't really go into those because they're still in the music industry and people would know who I'm talking about right away so yeah. I won't but um, you're right you can't you can't get too high yeah. on the highs man because so many times in the entertainment world uh, there's just a lot of a lot of uh, close calls that yeah. if you if you start to like oh yeah this is it, this is it you know what I mean yeah it's very good it's very likely that you could you burn go out on a, go on a low low you know yeah and, and you, you, you burn out and if you go on a low low, man, and what I mean by low low is like in a in a in a funk, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, it's hard to get out of. Yeah, it is. It's hard to stay motivated in this kind of field, man. You got to stay motivated uh, as best you can, anyway. So, yeah, you got to love what you do. It's too. a brutal industry, man, but it, it's great as well. I mean, I've I've I, I know you have, but I can say I've done so many things in my life that I never thought I would have done. I've never, th I never thought I would have played shows with Alan Jackson, Reba. You know, the list goes on. And you've told me that 16, at age 16, that I would have been doing all, that I would have had the chance to do all that. I, I might have believed you, but also I might have laughed at you. Yeah. <laughs> True. You know? So yeah, so I would say that. Well, hell yeah. Let me ha let me hear what you guys think. What do you? Uh, what's your favorite song of ours? There you go. I'll just get you guys talking. Who decides that. what goes on your albums? I just saw that as a question. It um, depends on if you're talking about us or if you're talking about signed artists. Yeah, that's true. For us, you know, independent, you are kind of living and dying by what you want. You know, you, you do what you want. It's kind of it's funny. It's a double-edged sword because, like, everybody wants to get signed and everybody wants to be doing this, this, and this. But then... You know, when you do get signed, uh, unless you're, you know, so, so big that you get to walk into these labels and make your own deal, um, you know, you you have to kind of play ball a little bit, which means maybe they want to take you in a direction that you don't necessarily want to go in. You know, you have to give up a little bit of creative for, uh, you know, for the opportunity to, to, to get signed. However, um, yeah. You know, but that's also part of it because once you do get signed, it opens a whole lot, of, a whole lot, could change your much more change, doors. Change your whole career, man. Yeah. You know, and I think one thing that I, uh, <clears throat> I didn't really think about it back then, but I mean that could, that kind of career impact could has the potential to you know be an impact for your family as well. Sure. You know what I mean? If you, if you get signed and you go you go regional, you go national, man. That's some if you if you have success, you know that could. That could set your that could set up yeah you know, if, you, if you continue to have success so. and then also once you get signed though then it starts a, a clock about you know how how much 
how much content you can kick out, how relevant you can stay in the first couple of years, mm-hmm. you know, because God forbid you get out there with a song that's like super, super popular. And then your next two or three don't really go that way. And then all of a sudden now, you know, everyone's kind of looking at you like your old news. And now you have to rebrand and 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 really just like reinvent everything. And that might be a sound that you love, but you kind of have to like stray from it. So th- it, there's just like a lot. But to answer your question, um, I pick my own songs. You know, yeah. I, I usually I got four or five people that um, that <clears throat> I that I trust their opinion, and uh, I just ask them, see what they think. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, then I just roll with it. Uh, but I ultimately I know which ones I want to cut. You know. Yeah, same. You're writing and when you're writing for other people. You're also writing for yourself, and like you just know like that's me. Yeah. Or that one's Grayson. You know, like I we could be writing. I'd be like, yo, this is you all day. You need to take this song. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, man. Yep. There's pros and cons to being signed. There's pros and cons to not. If you're not signed, you get to do whatever the heck you want. Yeah. If you are signed, you have people hopefully pushing you if you got a good deal, you know, helping you get out there and really, really help take your career off. Um, you know, there's there's pros and cons to everything, especially that. So, but yeah, I would, I, I, I feel like we gave them some good insight there. Yeah, for sure. And there's so much more, like all these episodes that we are going to be uh recording for you guys like there's just there's so much stuff if you have any questions just ask you know we're we're an open book we're, yeah we we're have questions to... if you have them shoot them at us yeah um one thing that i would that i, that I would kind of pivot have you ever experienced since you've been in the music world yeah um have you ever experienced any online trolls about your music or you as a person um and yeah. when I say by that keyboard warriors, people that just fly off the cut yeah. with their thumbs. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's you're gonna have haters in every audience member. Like you I've had people in crowds just heckle you. He- heckle me because they didn't like, you know, whatever, something about my song or whatever, and they just give you a boo or they you know, or you're at an original showcase and they're telling you to play like old covers or something like that. But yeah, there was this one guy actually that used to he used to like basically track me down anytime I'd be on like Facebook live or whatever. He'd just be like, here we go. Another cowboy trying to sing like another, <laughs> another, another lame ass cowboy trying to sing broken country music. And it'd be like, dude, wh- where are you? Where, where are you? And can we meet up? <laughs> no, but there's going to be hecklers oh, really? wherever it, it does. It literally at this point, it doesn't bother me. It actually like motivates me. If anything, like I don't, that stuff doesn't even bother me anymore. Yeah. Uh, I've had them for my whole career. Pretty much. I remember when I first started singing when I was 18, um, brand new to all of it. And, yeah. uh, some dude, uh, it was, it was in a local scene in Florida and I was, I probably played two gigs and we were, we were taking off pretty fast. Mm-hmm. And in this local scene, there were other country artists that were already kind of established, you know? Oh, yeah. And so here this comes this young kid. Not the best singer at the time. I'll be <coughs> completely upfront and honest. Just uh, good enough and a good entertainer. A sure. really, really good entertainer. Um, That's literally what Nashville does just makes you better. Yeah. And so I get, the, I get a gig opening up for Sarah Evans. And I get the suds in the bucket and the clothes hanging yeah. out on the line. Yeah. And I remember, and this doesn't sound like a big deal, but for an 18-year-old dude who's just starting, has no idea what he's doing, this dude comments on the promo of me, Sarah Evans, and I forget who else it was, but it was like, this kid sounds like Kermit the Frog. What the hell is he doing on this stage? And I just, that was the first time ever. And it's like this, it's its not a big deal. It's really not when you hear it. Right. But as an 18-year-old kid, bro, I was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? And it just started who, off. Why are you show, throwing hate on Kermit? Yeah, right. First of all, Kermit there's actually is a multiple, legend. He's there's also probably, multiple country artists right now that sound like Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog's <laughs> probably a freaking the only billionaire frog out there, man. So yeah. hey, go green, baby, right. go green. But anyway, and uh, I've had them throughout my music career, but ever since I started streaming, it's been in like a whole nother level. Really? Oh my gosh! So all the because stuff, you're opening yourself up to more hate. Well, because you know when it comes to music hate, it's usually just about your music. Sure. This is in the stream world. It's about like you as a person, it's not personal. It, it's personal, yeah, because everyone's trying to do it. You does know it, what I does mean? Does it bother you more? It does bother me more. Sure. 
I was, I'm, I'm still pretty good at ignoring it because yeah. I get a lot of it. I will tweet about him here and there. <laughs> but anyway, I woke up the other day, and I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead and I'll you let you, read, read I'll it? let you read that. This right, the, just this one right here. I woke okay. up to that the other day. And you edit, want to read this out loud? Edit, edit, edit. Oh yeah, edit the swears. Edit, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just read above don't that. Don't read too. the name. Don't read the name. I would never. Yeah, don't read the name. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll f yo, bitch ass up. See you in your stream tonight. I'm gonna raise hell with my community in your chat. Like it, was, it was so random, bro. Dude, this is ridiculous. It was so random. And I get that stuff all the time. That's ridiculous. All the time, bro. From different and people. And what, what he said actually above that was even worse. I don't even want to read that one. Oh, I don't even remember. Yeah, anyway. But anyway, yeah, the more you the more you put yourself out there on the internet, man, there's going to be people out there. And it's I feel like today, in today's world, it's like really bad. Yeah, like it's definitely a double-edged sword. You need the internet. It is a tool yeah. in order to get ahead in the music or do whatever you're trying to do. But there's just so many people out there that are just, they're hate. They, they just, they, they, they have nothing going on for themselves. They're just sitting back and they're just losers. <laughs> and they're just trying to make other people feel exactly how they feel. Like losers. <laughs> no, that's right. And to that guy... I want to say his name so bad, but I won't. No, don't. No. Yeah, you get this. It's just you get a crazy, thumbs man. down. It's just cra- like honestly, like I have people on the internet that I don't like. Yeah, I would. I would literally. I don't think I. I. I would never think about like even <laughs> sending any kind of remote of a message. Hey, to bro. Them. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> have a nice night. Like, what are you doing? Why are you watching it? <laughs> Dude, I, it's so crazy, good. man. It's so crazy. But anyway, so that's something else you deal with whenever, especially nowadays on the in the TikTok world and everything like that. I have I have friends in the stream world, and I have a friend uh, that's a music artist yeah. that have done pretty well on TikTok, but the majority of comments are hate. It's, it's You hear that from it's every, wild. every major artist says the same thing. That like it's not like the millions of people that say like you're awesome, you're doing a great job. It's like the one that comment on like a physical attribute that you're like wicked self conscious about. Yeah. And like that that's the one thing that really gets them. But you know what? You gotta let this stuff roll off your shoulders. You got you know? to. I've gotten yeah. I've gotten pretty good at it. I will tweet it out here and there though, just to let because I feel like, man, I feel like at the end of the day, if you don't stand up to some bullies, man, you know what I mean? Somebody's gotta stand up to some bullies. That's right. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Chad, how we feeling, y'all? We feeling good. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Um, we got some good solid uh commenters ice man what's up big dog uh carla how are you terry how are you cheryl how are you uh nina how are you ice man do you Lori, how like are you? top gun curious uh ice man is ice man's lit bro he's been he's Liddy. he's he's uh Liddy, lit, lit. Liddy is he's in my twitch community man he's been freaking breaking me left and right in streams lately bro yeah. shout out to Love ice that. man dude in how, how hands, is streaming going misty you? stafford it's picking up, man. Uh, we're we're we were in a uh, we were in you know with streaming, man. It, it's it's an up and down roller yeah. coaster. You know what I mean. Um, sometimes you're doing really well. Highway to the danger zone. I love that guy. You're right. He's solid. And uh, sometimes it's 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 bad. You know. Yeah. And uh, viewership in general, yep. um, for streaming, has gone down, um, because you know it was peaking during COVID. Yeah, everyone's just home. And now that everything's pretty much lifted and all of that, you know, it's viewership's definitely gone down. So you definitely yeah. gotta, you definitely have to uh, find a way to uh, continue to gr- find a way to continue to grow and, <coughs> and be consistent. Be consistent. Yeah, and get sure. people in there, man. It's it's not it's not, you know just like the music industry, it's not easy. Yeah, word. Yeah. Um. So what else we got? Anything happen in the world? We need to address. Uh, we need to give our. Opinion. I don't know, I, man. I mean, I would like to address the fact that Aaron Rodgers is going to the Jets. Yeah, that's right. I heard that. That's mind blowing. Yep. Aaron, Rod- I mean, it's crazy. Whenever, like, I would, I, like, you're a Patriots fan. How how did it feel watching Tom Brady go from the Pats to the Buccaneers? You know what? As a lifelong Pats fan, 
and lifelong Brady fan. Uh, I didn't. I mean, it was sad to watch him go because he had so many memories, and like that's when I like the Sports Illustrated, um, like the movie, the 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 documentaries about like all of his Super Bowl wins and stuff like that was coming out, and so it was right around the same time, and it was we were all like everybody was bummed, right? Yeah. But if you love Brady, like you loved him for the for the Bucks too, right? There was some there was some people though in Mass that were like you know screw Brady, like we're done with him or whatever, but. Dude, the majority of people were How like so pumped for him when he when he won in uh, Tampa Bay. How could you? After all he did for your yeah. franchise, I don't understand those people that are like, "Oh, I hate Brady." Now it's like, dude, this man. And now I hate to say it, this dude took pay I cuts. I hate to say it, but it was all Brady, bro. Not I, all. It wasn't all Brady, but I mean, look yeah. where look where your team's at right now. Yeah, they're, they're definitely not where they were i mean but he's just that's what happens when you're playing with the goal like he just elevates the whole team but then you also have like great coaching with belichick and great coach and, and, and receivers I, when, I say, and, when i say all i didn't mean yeah. all because bill is one of the greatest coaches of all time but the seven six super bowls seven six i think it was six six super bowls that y'all won yeah i don't think you win one of them without brady no oh no no way yeah but I mean, you also had like receivers that were like coming up and had like so much heart and so much soul because they didn't weren't like a big, big name. You know what I mean? Like you had like so many things contributing to the fact that yeah, to their success. Yeah. But uh, Baker Mayfield. Anyway. Baker Mayfield has been is being signed to the Buccaneers. They just broke that news today. Oh, Saw someone good. asking about that. Um, well. You know, like uh, I brought that up because Aaron Rodgers is leaving Green Bay. He's been in Green Bay for 18 years, been yeah. a starter for 15. And as a Steelers fan, I got to watch my quarterback play his entire career and never leave right. and retire. And it was, I remember that last game with Ben at home. It was such a, it was, I can't, if you're not sports fans, I don't, maybe you'll understand somehow, but I, it was such a, it was such a wild, feeling because i've been watching him quarterback since i was like eight years old yeah he's been my quarterback my entire life yep. and to watch it come forth full circle uh him retire and just see the outpouring of love from a sold out stadium for this quarterback that just brought so many memories uh two championships went to three never had a losing season um Ben never had a losing season? Never had a losing season. Oh. Never. Um, it was just wild. It was it was cool to see. And I just I could imagine that Green Bay probably wanted that with Aaron Aaron. And I definitely yeah. know for a fact that New England wanted that with Tom. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad. That but that, team... that, that, that's what happens when you're just like that serious of a competitor. Yeah. You know, you always can believe that you have a little left in the tank. Like your whole career is like mind over matter, right? Yeah, it's always about like motivating yourself. So you've been doing that for twenty years. You, it's very easy to. I still want to compete. Yeah, but yeah, Tommy. Uh, yeah, dude, what an inspiration! I saw a good role right. model too. You know what he's I mean? A great dude. Like, man. there's so many he's people that you dude. listen to them uh, during the interviews. You can tell or, he's just a. He's just a. I mean, like, he's probably you know says some stuff on the field or whatever that. You know, might be a little bit colorful. You can like kind of read his mouth when he's like upset at a call or something like that. But for the most part, like he's just always been a good, he's been a good role model. I think there's so many bad examples of role models that kids follow these days. He's a, he's a good one. He's Tachi one, one was Tachi Suzano was there at Ben's last home game. Were you really? <clears throat> Tell me the feeling, bro, on how that felt of being there watching a hall of your hall of fame quarterback that's been your quarterback your entire life retire right there in front of Unreal. you. That's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. Um, so yeah, NFL is full full circle right now, man. I, I, that's why I love the NFL is because even in the off season, there's just drama, 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 and I'm I'm, I'm about it. I'm here for it. Yeah, Any hey, if you're if you're an NFL fan, type in your uh, type in your favorite team right now. Type in your squad, your squad. <laughs> Let's go, Michelle. How are you? Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, good night, guys. Have a great one. Thank you for hanging out with Cheryl. I appreciate you. Taji says, Taji says, yo, I made it. Let's go. I'm going to get so much hate. <laughs> I'm going to get so much hate. Wait, why? Bill's Mafia? Oh, I remember. Iceman's a Cowboys fan, bro. <laughs> Poor Cowboy fans, man. Oh, no. 
They're all they always have such high hopes and they end up being mediocre every year. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Anything else we, we should touch on? Anything else you want to touch on? Anything else y'all want us to touch to talk about before we... Uh... Yeah, dang. That hour goes fast. You know, we're still working out the kinks and stuff with, with the streaming, and uh, it's amazing how fast an hour goes. Yeah. Like, we literally just... Once we out. figure out the desktop audio, we'll be able to maybe run it longer because we'll be able to react to stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, but sure, sure, sure. Steelers, let's go. I like it. Yes, I know. Yeah. I don't want hate, but the Fa- I don't want hate, but the Falcons. Uh, anything else y- y'all can think? Anybody? Uh, no, I, I think it was. Uh, yeah, just happy to be episode number two. Episode number two. Here we on go. Our, on our way to being better than ninety percent of podcasts. <laughs> Vikings, hell yeah! Four episodes. <laughs> four episodes, chat. <laughs> That's what we have to beat. We have to beat four episodes. If we beat four episodes. We beat like 95% of the population that tries to start a podcast. Isn't that crazy? That's unbelievable. Well, you got to figure like everybody can record anything these days, you know? I feel like not. I feel also here we go on another tangent actually really quick. I feel like that proves in today's world, then please don't take offense to this, but it's such a... I can't make any promises. It's such a... Not you. I was talking to them. Such a microwave society to where if somebody starts a podcast and they're three episodes in and they don't get any traction, they quit. Instant gratification is what I mean. Yeah. So many people want instant gratification nowadays. Yeah, for sure. Um, in today's world. And they don't wanna they don't wanna work for it. Yeah, they assume that the internet provides them with like the um, exponential growth and algorithmic growth that you just get to like do some sort of a gimmick or do some shtick or you know act wacky or a dance and it allows you to 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 be famous all of a sudden. That's why it's important to love what you do, and that's why I actually like about the show is that we're not like here to blow up. We're here to just like chill out, yeah, you know, and and obviously gain some followers and let you guys see who we are. But like, it's not like. <laughs> We're going to, like, you know, put whipped cream in our faces so that, like, everyone's, like, Hey, don't knock that, bro. I've done that on stream before, dude. (laughs) This is awkward. Not not whipped cream in the face. No, I haven't. Actually, one time I did uh, did every, every, what did I do? I did every five subs, I'll dump water on my head. I had How many to, subs? I had to dump water on my head like did you have like a pool? like fifty times, bro. It my was God, dude. It got to the point where I was just like, all right, I'm re- I, I regret this. I speaking regret, of speaking I of regret this. Speaking of kind of get, not gimmicks, but like funny stuff that we've done. We used to have this show called uh, on Facebook. It was called GNL, and we used Let's to go. we used to basically sing. And like write and and we but we would like hang out. There was like three guys and we'd we'd basically just like have a variety hour of stuff that we'd sing. We'll, we'll do some of that stuff on here. Sure, so we'll yeah, play we'll, a couple we'll songs. Have fun with it. Yeah. But one of the um, events that happened after was like it was like an egg toss. No, dude, it was it was human battleship <laughs> with eggs. Human battleship with eggs. And we would on literally stand battle. on a tarp and we would just get like eggs chucked at us. <laughs> Just getting crushed with eggs. Like, you know what? Do you know what egg does to your beard when it settles in there? Not only that, but it kind of hurts a little bit, dude. If it smacks you right on the damn head. Yeah. Some of us were whipping. Some of us were whipping them eggs. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) It's true. Some of us were throwing them pretty hard. I don't know why. That was crazy. And a, a little bit about me, though. I don't like to feel dirty. I hate that. Yeah, you're 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 not a germaphobe, but like I hate that. You're not not a germaphobe. Yeah, like, you like to you like things to smell clean. I like the things. I like things to smell clean. Yeah, I like things to look clean. I like to feel clean. And yeah. when I'm like like even even so far as to like if I walk outside barefoot, right on the grass or the yeah. mud, immediate shower. Like I'm immediately like I'm going to stick my feet in the bathtub right now. Yeah, like I hate that feeling. You're like Howie Long, dude. Yeah, you're a little bit of a germaphobe. A little bit. It's okay though. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Good guy to be on the road with. Kind of like what we were talking about earlier. That's very true. Yeah. You won't have to worry about me smelling. So yeah, unless it's from the gig to the hotel, right? Then uh, there's not really I can do about that. No, 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 no. So not at all. Uh, but yeah, G and uh, G and L. That was crazy. That, that was, was crazy. Valtex, what's up? 
How we doing? Thank you for coming in. Don't forget about the nasty jelly beans. Oh, do you- <laughs> people Dude, still do those. Those though. were disgusting. Some of the flavors were like dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we just ate and be like, oh my Quite god! Literally. I swear, I can literally just—I know what this dog ate Quite from his literally bean too, bro. Like, oh, dude, I think the I earwax. Had, what did um, I have? I had a. What was it? Spoiled milk. Spoiled had, milk was the nastiest. I had dead oh fish, God. I think, right? Dead fish. Dead fish was disgusting. Dead fish about made me. I literally almost. I, oh my gosh, dude! I just remembered all of those. Those were disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> they were nasty, bro. We literally like dreaded that. Dreaded that. Oh my gosh! Why did we do that to ourselves? We were just. We were keeping it. We weren't even getting we're paid. Keeping, At least we on Twitch, you're getting paid. <laughs> We're keeping it away. People were dropping subs and bits for you to do it. We were just doing that crap for free, bro. <laughs> what is wrong with us? A lot of things. No one's been able to pinpoint one. That's true. I saw a clip of you pouring syrup in your head. True or not true? Very true. Damn. Very That's true. Sticky I did business, that. brother. That was that was nasty. Yeah. That was gross. What kind of syrup? Sugar free? Maple. <laughs> Maple. Like it matters. 100%. <laughs> oh, it was maple. It, it 100% matters. 100% <laughs> maple I'm just messing. syrup. I said if we hit 120 <laughs> subs, I'll pour some, I'll pour uh, syrup on my head. Is and it Buttersworth? No, he used my expensive syrup. Like the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. <laughs> the audacity. We didn't have anything else. What do you want from me? <laughs> we got 150 <laughs> subs that night. Buy like freaking three of them. You know what I mean? That's funny. But it was, it was, uh, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. It was gross. That's so funny. But it was nasty. Every chat liked it, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So, yeah, very true. Very true. Good deal. Uh, y'all, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us, man. You guys and gals. Nick, you got a show tomorrow night? Yeah, nine o'clock at the Vinyl Lounge. Uh, 45 minutes set, all originals. Uh, full band. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. So, anybody in Nashville, come on by. And then, uh, Friday, I think at 10 o'clock a.m., I play the listening room. And then 4 o'clock p.m., I'm playing a uh, golf course for St. Patrick's Day down in Murfreesboro. That's so, awesome. Pretty good lineup. And, uh, and yeah, just just doing just doing it. Love that. I love, I love live gigging. Anybody who knows me knows that live gigging is my favorite part of what we do. Oh, same. Same, 100%. Uh, got, How about you? I got, good? Some, I got some rights, and then I'll be streaming, trying to grow that, Where? trying to look into some. They got some new platforms coming out that I got to look into and see if it's worth <laughs> trying to go, trying to go for. Uh, work on some our some shorts for us. Yeah. Work on getting our our YouTube channel up and running, our Instagram, all the socials and emails and all that stuff. And we yeah. did not forget about the merch. We will definitely send out that merch from last yes. week. Yes, that's right. We got it written down. Um, it just takes a minute sometimes. So thank yep. you for your patience on that. Uh, we appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. We. Uh, oh, are, are you are you good for next Wednesday or are you out of town? Uh, let me look. I think <clears throat> I should be good. I'm glad you asked me, though, every time. It's good. I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, today is the 14th, next Wednesday. I'm in town, baby. Let's do it. Hey, yep. if we're going to see you next Wednesday, same time <clears throat> here, say me. If we're going to see you next Wednesday... Say me. I want. I want to see how many of y'all are gonna hang out with us next Wednesday night. We've had some great listeners the whole time. I need y'all to type me yep. in the chat. There we go, Misty. Uh, there oh. we go. All right. Here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. Okay. Here's the challenge. Even if y'all, there's people that could hang out with us, even if they don't know us, man. I feel like people will still like us. So the challenge is, <laughs> Laura, Valtex, <clears throat> Joanne, Morgan, Lori, Mary, Nina, Terry. Lose Valentine, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, uh, Nina, The Queen. The challenge is to bring one person that you know. Yeah, good call. To get them in here as well. Um, we got close to last week's peak. Um, I think we. What What did you say our peak was? I thought it was thirty. I thought I saw thirty six. <clears throat> thirty six. So that's ex- actually it ties it ties okay. last week's. Dope. Ties last week's peak. Uh, so I would really appreciate it if y'all could uh, tell somebody you know about this podcast, man. Help us launch it, okay? Because yep. like, I don't like our 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 goal is not to like become famous, but it would be dope to continue to grow it. Absolutely, and we'd like to get to a point where people are excited to come on the show and um, call ins, call ins, but come on in the show and and you know be not interviewed, but just like chat and hang with us, kind of like what we're doing. And it's just nice to get people excited about it when there's a bunch of people watching. So was, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's one thing is yeah, you know, obviously we can get like friends and people we know here, but if we want to like get 
you know other people we don't know mm-hmm. a lot of people we're gonna want look at these know. guys i'll bring my whole community next time i'll do that that's awesome we a love that a lot of people are gonna want to know that people are watching and that's up to y'all i'm gonna say 60 <clears throat> we're gonna have 60 viewers next week 60 viewers prove week. prove do me guys, wrong do y'all think we could hit 60 viewers next week that would prove, be lit prove me wrong hey we appreciate y'all hanging out man on another episode of uh, another day with Nick and Gray, just chatting it up, man, telling y'all about the music industry and yes, uh, us, and y'all getting to know us a little more. Appreciate y'all, man. Hope y'all have a blessed night. Uh, until next Wednesday. Peace. Adios. See you.